It was a groundbreaking, best-selling book in the early 2000s, Queen Bees and Wannabes, Helping Your Daughter Survive Clicks, Gossip, Boyfriends, and Other Realities of Adolescence, uh, went on to become the inspiration for the original and now cult classic Welcome. Mean Girls movie. I'm from Michigan. Over the years, author Rosalind Wiseman has shifted her focus from social dynamics of teenage girls' lives to adults, but she says the two are not that different at all. Rosalind works as a speaker and consultant for Schools and Corporation, and she joins us now. Rosalind, thanks for being with us. Good morning. Thanks for having me. And I've done three editions of Queen Bees. That was the, I saw the early 90s kind of version. So, it's like, so there's been three editions ago. and updates since then. And yes. it's an iconic book. You know what I find so interesting is that so many of those th rules that you applied to teenage girls, they travel with women through their lives. You find when you're dealing with corporate structures, women are still behaving the same way, yes? Well, I, yes, and I think it's really surprising because you don't think it's going to happen at work. And, you know, also parents can relate to this too, where we think we're adults and then something happens and then people start acting like we remember from middle school. And then we might start acting like we're from middle school. And my job is to be able to give people the coping skills to be able to handle it, let it go, and act like the grown ups that they want to be. Yeah, you know, we, we were just kind of talking on the set uh, about how the difference of, of how boys and girls do their social engineering. Um, yes. How much of it have you discovered that the mean girl gets their vibe from their mother? Because uh, oh. when I meet some of these parents, I think, oh, this is why your, your daughter is the way she is. <laughs> the apple does not fall from the tree yeah. kind of thing. Um, you know, actually, um, I have seen that sometimes that is the case, but there's a lot of children. There's a lot of um, girls who look at their moms like that. Um, who are hyper involved in their lives, who want their lives to be sort of a billboard of accomplishments that they can <laughs> put in the media. And the girls actually look at that as almost being their anti mentors, that they don't want anything to be like mm. that. So, you know, and also, you know, dads are very much in this. They really are. And so, um, you know, sometimes dads will say, like, oh, I'm not getting involved with any of this. But it's really important for dads to be involved, too, because they've got their own issues. They certainly do. I've written about that, too. And it comes out professionally as well and with parenting. But the most important is our kids, for, for parents, to your question, is our kids need to see that we can handle conflict effectively instead of having temper tantrums or running away. And how has this escalated since social media? Because I... You mentioned these mom Facebook groups, which I find oh such an, an interesting thing. I, I don't think I've joined any of them, but it's like it's this passive aggressive, the humble bragging and then the oh my calling gosh. people out. It's nuts, right? It is. And, you know, I know that people use Facebook parenting groups as a way to connect. And I don't want to take away from that. Right. But but I have to say, if you are listening to this, that I have seen so many things where I have known what is actually happening in a school. And on the parent face, the Facebook group, it's like this happened and the school did nothing or this child is horrible or this family is horrible. And it is so much more complex than mm. that. But a school can never say what's really happening because then that betrays conf uh, confidentiality. And it's also totally unprofessional to actually go in a Facebook group and say, like, here's what's really happening. Right. You would, you know, you'd never want that if your kid was the one that was in trouble. But I find sometimes the schools seem either oblivious to it or they are, for whatever reason, too intimidated to confront the parents about their kid who's, who's being disruptive. Do you find the same thing and, and what needs to change? Well, t parents need to ha st stop having self-righteous temper tantrums. I mean, because you think you're act you're advocating for your child does not give you the right to act like you are in middle school. It doesn't give you the right to gossip and to, you know, go behind people's backs or say accusations that you actually really don't know and um, or to repeat things like that. It does not help. And it actually contributes to schools and administrators being so scared that they they don't want to do anything. They're paralyzed. And I actually see the same thing in corporations where people say, I've got one person who's yelling at me on one side and another person who's yelling at me about the same topic, but on a totally different on the other side. I'm just not going to do anything. And, you know, I, I can't blame people for having that kind of reaction, but we need to be brave. We can do this. I know we can do this. Well, Rosalind, if it's any comfort, you're doing good work. But I remember my grandmother telling me in assisted living that they were 
you know, sh uh, saving seats at the table at dinner. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I've heard Same that. Thing. I've heard that old, I know, I've heard that in the in communities like yeah. that, they, I could do a lot of work there. Too. Yeah, oh, you could. <laughs> well, it's fascinating stuff. For more, you can check out RosalindWiseman.com and you can follow her on social media. Thanks so much. Thank you. Thank you.